Hi guys, we are here today with Wahoo and I'm joined by Neil and Mac from Sufferfest. These guys are both incredible athletes in their own right, but they are also world-class coaches. Um, their client list includes multiple world Olympic champions and both men's and women's hour record holders. Um, we're going to be talking today about Sufferfest app and about the new kicker bike from Wahoo. Um, so Neil and Mac, thank you for joining us guys. For those who don't know, can you give us a bit of a rundown of, of what the Sufferfest app is, um, uh, who it's for, um, what level of rider will, will benefit best from it? The, uh, the Sufferfest training app is really a complete training app that includes indoor cycling workouts. We also have built in some running workouts. We have a mental toughness and mental training program. We have yoga sessions and strength training. So we really kind of approach this, this indoor training from a lot of different angles. And as far as who it's for, it's really just any, any level. The, the main goal is to get people to train smartly indoors, make the most of their time. Obviously, that's a lot of time crunched athletes who, if you have an hour, you want to make the most of it. But at the same time, elite riders can still benefit from it. Uh, and it's compatible with uh, all Wahoo trainers and smart trainers and like the, the kicker bike as well. So the, the Suffer Best training app actually can be used with a large range of trainers, even ones that aren't, you know, something as, as uh, advanced as the kicker bike. Uh, a trainer that doesn't have any of that connectivity can still be used for you to do the workout, though you're going to get the best experience using a smart trainer like a kicker or kicker bike, where you're going to have that integration with the app where it's going to connect and you're going to see all the information with power output and if you have the right sensors as well, heart rate, cadence, all of those elements are going to be included in that uh, data from the app. Yeah, and when you, when you do pair it with a, a smart trainer, something like the kicker bike, you know, the intensity will adjust for you. You have the two options. You can try and hit the targets yourself, or you can put it into erg mode, and there's no line when you're in erg mode, so it's either you get it done or, or you don't. And how beneficial is it, do you think, to have a training tool like the kicker bike where you can really dial your fit in close and you can get a, as close to true road feel as possible for training? So, well, yeah, one of the biggest things is definitely the, the fit feature of this, of being able to put in your existing, um, you know, fit information off of your outdoor bike and be able to know exactly how to adjust everything. Um, it's really important to, you know, keep that fit similar to avoid injury. Um, it also makes it really great for if there's, you know, if you, multiple people want to be using it. The other uh, really interesting thing too is you can play a little bit with fit and position. So one of the cool things with the kicker bike, there is the, the different uh, adjustments for actually crank length. You can go from a 165 to a 167, 5, 170, all the way up to 175 and assess how you're able to ride and what kind of power you're producing and what your heart rate response is for, for during, doing different efforts and make any adjustments with the saddle position as well and see how, how that feels to you without being out on the road and kind of stuck and not necessarily knowing whether it was a, a good or a bad thing for you to do. Well, can you give us a rundown of what, uh, what 4DP is um, and, and what's the difference between that and FTP and why would you recommend using one over the other? 40p is really a method of training that we use and it's looking at four dimensional power because your capacity on the bike is more than just like that sustained power. So threshold power, FTP, functional threshold power is the one value that tends to be something that more people think about and know about. But there's very few races when we look at like actually competitive cycling that are won just as, a, as an FTP test. There is a range of power outputs then that are associated with performance. So VO2 max is something we do in the lab in a kind of sports science setting, but we look at max aerobic power, kind of five minute power, as another element that's really important for success for something like an individual pursuit. And then there's anaerobic capacity. We use a shorter term effort then, about a one minute all out effort, tells us a bit about anaerobic capacity, which is really kind of deep, digging deep into that, you know, on off way over threshold. And then there's really true kind of sprint power, neuromuscular power, your five second power. And what we do with the training app is we actually have targets for all the workouts using those four different values, depending on the type of interval. And so it really customizes any workout to a given individual's capacity. So these training plans are, they're, they're tailored to um, individual uh, people and they're gonna be as beneficial for a, for a beginner rider as they are for an experienced rider. Um, 
if someone's just getting used to starting with the app, um, what's, what piece of advice would you give to them? So one of the things with our training plans that's, that's unique and I'd say superior to like just an FTP based plan is when you, when you do the full frontal 40p test, we get to see where your relative strengths and weaknesses are. And, and physiologically speaking, those metrics are always going to be in a specific ratio. And knowing where you are at the start of a training plan, where you might be limited, allows us to give you a more specific plan to your weakness to get you to the same goal. So if you're a, a time trialist who wants to train for a time trial and you have a VO2 or MAP weakness, the training you should be doing at the start to get you better, better at sustained efforts at the end is, is different compared to someone who has a sustained weakness. And if, uh, if someone does think they might be overtraining then, um, if recovery is so important, um, is there a, a sign or a signal that they'd have to look out for? What's, what's the best way to see that? Uh, yeah, a really easy one to see when you're on the bike if, is if you do have a heart rate monitor hooked up to the app. Is what you'll see with fatigue is that your heart rate will be slower to rise during efforts. It won't hit as high of a peak and it'll be slow to come back down. And so that's what we see a lot of times is, is when someone gets excessively fatigued. They think that, oh, my heart rate is lower for this hard effort. I must be doing, I must be getting way fitter. And then they'll just keep going, which is the opposite of what you want to do at that point. Yep. Another thing that will often happen is, you know, impacting your, your motivation. You know, as you get more tired, you know, sometimes that motivation will start to flag a little bit and people will sometimes be a little too hard on themselves. Like, well, I guess I need to buckle down even more. And it's like, no, no, no. You know, those signs and signals are something you need to listen to and pull back a little bit. If you take two or three days, get back into it, you'll be better off than just trying to plow through. Now, for anybody who hasn't used uh, the self app before, um, it can be brutal. Um, you guys are evil geniuses, uh, but um, it, it really trains mental toughness as, as well as physical training. Um, how important is that in, in a race setting? Um, you guys are obviously very familiar with the hour record. How important is mental toughness versus training something like that? Oh, it's, it's, it's massive. Like you can, you can be the fittest person in the world, but if your motivation is poor or you don't believe in yourself or as soon as it gets hard, you just pull the plug, then it doesn't matter how fit you are. And being able to get through the rough patches, which especially in an hour record, there's plenty of those during that, being able to continue to push on is, is what makes the difference between hitting goals or doing your absolute best versus falling short. The, the mental training is absolutely critical component to success and not just in, in the, the sporting side too. This goes and carries over into other areas of life. There's a, a mental component to things that we do and developing those skills and that capacity is really going to help you again in what you do on the bike. Like this morning actually I was doing workout and it was a longer, longer effort and uh, we're in the middle of the tour of Supperlandria right now in stage four. and. I just had to break it into pieces, manage it, and you know that carried me through. And finally, I guess, uh, how important do you think a structured indoor workout plan is for, for a full training plan someone? In my personal experience, it's, it's massive. The, the first time I really realized the benefit was in 2014 when I broke my collarbone and was stuck inside for eight weeks. And then another two weeks after that, I was at collegiate nationals and had my best collegiate nationals ever and was much fitter than I'd ever been before. And it's because everything was just completely structured. There was no, there's no waiting at lights. There's no interrupting intervals. There's no going too hard because there's a climb that you have to get over to get home. It just makes every workout precise, which a lot of the times is, is exactly what people need, especially if you've hit a, a plateau in fitness. Another big thing we have is kind of a purpose and progression that we have purpose when we get on the bike for specific sessions. And then we can assess and, and build progression and, and a little bit of an improvement, a little bit of an increase in demand. And those kind of things really carry over really well. Um, the indoor, you know, is something that I've been doing for a really long time. I was uh, an undergraduate and getting ready for a triathlon race. And I uh, lived in an area where outdoor riding in the winter was not really that, you know, just wasn't very conducive in, in uh, Pennsylvania where I was. And so I was riding trainers and writing some of the workouts that are actually, you know, in, in use now 30 some years later um, in, in the app. And so the yeah. gains that you can the make. The blender workout is one year younger yeah. than I am. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, they have some vintage to them and we've yeah, refined yeah. Uh, some of those workouts, but really it's about that purpose and progression that, that you can really, really dial in with, with uh, the indoor and indoor workouts. Well, Neil, Mac, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that was incredibly useful, incredibly interesting. Um, these guys, as we've said, are brutal, evil geniuses. Um, I'm going to be trying out the uh, full frontal 4DP challenge myself and probably going to throw up doing it. Um, but if you want to try it for yourself, uh, then you get a 14 day free trial with the Sufferfest app. Or if you buy any Wahoo Kicker product, uh, you're going to get 30 day free trial. Um, and the new Wahoo Kicker bike is going to be available from Evans Cycles very soon.